Initially announced, uh, the talk was initially announced as hacking, and it's going to be more like society and politics. I'm a legal advisor, I'm not a hacker. I um, will not be able to provide you with many answers, but a little more questions. So if you're looking for a technical presentation, there will be only technical questions here, not technical answers. And part of my task is to uh, try to uh, formulate the right questions. So it's more like a society and politics, a lawyer stuff. And this guy is the last great lawyer, really. I don't know if we have some time. Edwin Hubble, so, the guy, OK, yeah. I'll shut <laughs> I'll take over. Um, um, something I would like to ask you right now is that uh, after the talk, you please take out your trash and all the bottles that you can find. Um, for the talk, he already said it's Peyo. Um, he already told you that this is not a hacking talk, it's uh, more a political uh, talk, so if you came for the hacking thing, um, you might want to leave, I don't know. But maybe you want to stay and hear what he has to say. He just wanted to avoid you being disappointed. Um, the talk will last for about 40 minutes, and after that we will have a Q&A session. So um, if you can think of questions, please do so during the talk. I will go around the room and um, I'll ask you after the talk to raise your hands, and I'll go around the room and uh, hold the microphone in front of you. I won't hand it out. So please give it up for Payo and Electronic Money, the road to Bitcoin and a glimpse forward. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here, and it's a forum that I lost a lot. Uh, I used, uh, I learned a lot from. So I should start by introducing myself. What do I do? As I started, I'm a legal advisor. I usually work for IT companies. And in the last four years, I've been working on payment system, payment services, and mobile electronic uh, signatures. What do I specifically find uh, most? Uh, useful doing is finding legal problem and solution to a technical matters. So if you have a technical solution and you think it's ready for the life worth exploitation, you usually come to me or if you work in a company and you go back not as happy as you came. Because I'll find a lot of problems, a lot of new questions. And uh, this is uh, what my um, what I'm going to achieve. I'm going to define a problem, propose a solution, and ask for your help. I'm here to find uh, uh, help uh, in your competence and your understanding of the matter. Uh, but why first find the topic important? Uh, otherwise, then the people out on the metro station, they gave me a leaflet which was uh, calling for turning back the Deutsche Mark, separating the investment bank, uh, getting back the uh, gold standard, and that kind of stuff. The moment is right for, to get the electronic money right. Electronic money in the uh, ways of doing payments is something very important. I would compare it to the uh, great work that the uh, guys from Tor are doing. It's the same as the right to express yourself, to uh, reach, uh, to search and disseminate information. When you do payments, when you co conclude contracts online, you express yourself in the very same, if not in the very more specific matter. Just imagine Google, who has uh, made all these uh, huge databases and all put all these efforts in collecting marketing information, which is basically information for uh, your purchasing habits, your uh, buying behavior. What if, and they do have your purchasing information. And the problem is that electronic payments have not been done right. They have too many flaws and too many problems in them. And I'm going to talk about anonymity, privacy, uh, keeping, uh, making payments anonymous and keeping your privacy as a value that we already have when we use paper money, the, uh, something that's uh, well known. Uh, and a freedom that we lost uh, when we switch to electronic payments. This should not be this way. Uh, it can be done better. It has been already done better, but uh, the people who uh, made the solution failed somehow. And now we are up into a system which uh, just gives all your information for commercial purposes. Just as a uh, short example, work for marketing processing companies. 
uh, which process credit card purchase information. And a short advice, if you buy alcohol with your credit card, never buy a cheaper alcohol than you usually buy with your credit card because it would set an alarm bell somewhere in the US. They will know that something wrong with your credit rating because you are still addicted, but you don't have the money to support your addiction. Another uh, simple example, do not buy food or basic necessities on credit. It would set an immediate alert. This information is very uh, important. It's processed very uh, carefully. Your stereotype, typized, analyzed. I don't know. I don't have to explain you what you can do with that kind of information. And as uh, from point of privacy, we lost that privacy when we switched to electronic payments. So uh, what I'm trying to achieve with this specific talk, this is a very new topic. So uh, my contribution, my main contribution, will be to define a problem. If we ask the right question, if we ask them for different perspectives, we might just simply be thinking in the right direction to get the right answers. I'll propose some solutions, but this would be kind of arrogant, because the professors from the university, they were able to identify a lot of problems in the current system. A, uh, they did not kind of try to propose solution, but I've looked to the current uh, state of the art, at least, that I know, and I see some things that might work and some things that might get better. And the, finally, the most important, I will be asking for help because this is something that I am not even close to solving myself, so I'm not any kind of leader that just might claim to have all the answers. And because I'm a legal guy, disclaimers is the most important thing. First, uh, the thing, uh, I'm not trying to solve by electronic money the economic. So it, I'll be talking, I'll be uh, focusing only on electronic money as a tool. Uh, any built-in economy uh, like deflation or fair distribution like the uh, guys from Bitcoin uh, do, I will, I'm not interested in the economic part. So I'm not going to tell you how to fix the, uh, fix the euro crisis, how to do anything else. This is something that, that I'm not going to do. Second very important disclaimer. What I'm going to tell you, especially in the legal part, it's optimized for time and audience. So do not take it as a legal advice. It would be utterly stupid if you do, because uh, this is not a good legal advice. These are more like the legal and societal and political concerns that any solution will be facing. This is judging from my experience. So I'll just kind of stop uh, with the disclaimers. And now, uh, to start with the definition of electronic money. When we talk of electronic money, uh, this is, uh, the definition is taken from the Financial Services Authority in the UK. This is uh, a text which is transp uh, transposition of the European uh, Directive for Electronic Money. And I'll just give a quick reading of it uh, and ask you to pay attention. So, it's a monetary value. It's something that is equal in the cash that's in your pocket, in the uh, money which is in your bank accounts. So it's just something like an aggregate condition, like the water. It's not a nice, it's not a vapor, it's a different state of money. Stored on an electronic device. Elect uh, it means they are, they are outside, uh, outside these uh, uh, containers, usually of money. A uh, very easy way uh, to determine if you're dealing with electronic money or some other kind of weird payment instrument is uh, the mind test that if you lose the device, uh, do you lose the money? So like you, when you lose the banknote, you lost the money. So uh, when you lose the token that you might be keeping your money in, if you, if you, when you lose it, you lose the money, so it's very uh, likely an electronic money. Issued on receipt of funds, so usually you exchange it for money from in other condition. This is something which is not true uh, on the other example. Uh, the other examples that I'm going to give, and accept it as a means of payment by persons other than the issuer. So it has some uh, societal value, let's put, uh, put it that way. And I'm going to give you another alternatives uh, to electronic money. All these examples, I've uh, tried to uh, select, uh, most of them are from Germany, uh, you can easily see one. And But the first uh, one is my favorite, this is the uh, Wirtschaft Genossenschaft from Switzerland is a remarkable uh, alternative to money. I uh, urge you to take a look and uh, research it. It's very interesting. I don't have time to uh, describe it right now. Ven is a societal currency 
which is on a hub culture, and all the, uh, the other ones are German local currencies. Uh, you might be uh, familiar with them, you might have used it. I haven't seen them, I only read about them. These are the Regio Geld, which seem to be very popular in Germany. Uh, so if you have an exam uh, experience with any of these things or kind of know uh, what this is, and Bitcoin is amongst them, sure, uh, they are alternatives to electronic money. And uh, here I'm going to start by uh, defining the problem by the <laughs> statement that money is hard. <laughs> People do not understand what money is. And the problem is that it's hard from various perspectives. Uh, it's used in so many ways that it has so many implications that it's way from technical thing. And it has most importantly the basic human perspective. It has the technical perspective of how do you make the tool, what kind of properties the tool has and how it works. It has enormous legal and political perspectives. You can see just by reading the news, it's all about money most of the time. And it, you have a lot of cost-related business uh, perspectives, uh, which are hard to be ignored because usually the, uh, your project, your e-money project, uh, fails or succeed on the cost part. It's usually, again, about the money in different way when it determines whether you succeed. So each and every perspective imposes its requirements to the general problem of electronic money, and you have to be able to grasp them all. And if there is a solution, you should evaluate it from all and different perspectives. So when you t we talk about, let's say, Bitcoin, because this would be the, like uh, something that I'll be turning around, it's very good from one perspective, but from others' perspective, it's not good at all. And all the critics that Bitcoin has received are usually they come from different perspectives. It's not like crypto uh, attacking, it's from human, legal, technical, because you have to solve them all. And solving all and making everybody happy, especially when it comes to something what uh, has to be as concessional as money, is very hard. So uh, I'm going to start with a uh, brief uh, description of the human perspective, which I find to be the very basic thing that we all know, but we tend to forget. It's so closely uh, integrated to it our, into our society that we trust to, uh, tend to forget them. Identification and authorization. <laughs> when we make any kind of deal, we usually would like to know or somehow identify the, peop the person that we are dealing. It depends on the medium that we are dealing. We usually know who, you are, who are we dealing with. And identification is the first and very important stage of uh, being able to conclude any transaction, to use money. So it's something like a prerequisite to use money. Authorization, uh, it's if they are not in your pocket, you need to somehow be authorized, authorized and identification is a, a prerequisite for this. Achieving consensus and easy dispute of resolution in a group. This is something, again, that uh, law is really concerned about. When we do uh, find a solution to a problem, it's not a solution until we agree. In the case of money, we have to agree each and every coin, let's say, if it's a physical coin, uh, it's easy to, uh, for us to reach a consensus where it's in the, this current moment. But if it's an uh, electronic one, it's very hard to determine uh, in a not disputable way where this value is, who is the owner, and how does it move. It's easy to sense the coin, but if it's an electronic form, it's tremendously harder to achieve consensus in this whole group, which is a good one, uh, where this money is. And if we have some kind of dispute amongst us, if it's here or if it should be here, we have to have an easy way to uh, resolve all uh, disputes amongst us. So when we talk on achieving consensus in a group and dispute, res uh, dispute resolution in a group, uh, it's something that how the law uh, solves this basic problem. And don't forget that if you want to achieve consensus in a group, you should be able to identify all the members in the group. So identification is, again, the first uh, part of a question. Uh, ben Laurie, I have a, a bibliography list. He has a very good paper on this, uh, which states in a very clear manner 
what uh, the consensus in a group is how, that about the consensus in a group. Determination of the state of the system at every given moment. This coin is in my possession at this very moment. We should all be able to determine this. Easy when it comes to something physical, way harder than it's come uh, to something uh, not tangible. And like in Bitcoin, they use all this uh, uh, computational power just to do this, to create value and to determine where is the value at every uh, given moment. And it's something that Bitcoin spends most resources on. So electronic money is not expensive, <laughs> not a cheap thing. And uh, trust. Trust is as short in here in my presentation as this uh, way much important because money is a matter of trust, it's a matter of re reliability and stability. If we do not trust in the tool that gives us monetary value and how we use it, they, it's completely lost, it's not good for everything. And this is one of the main reasons trust, because, uh, why uh, the revolutionary method would not work for money. It's a tricky uh, problem, but if uh, all of the society, all of the group is not convinced and sure and safe with the way the consensus was achieved about where your money are and that uh, they are yours, if you do not trust this method, you're completely lost. So this is from the very broad human perspective which in system uh, brings us to the system or just plain technical risk, uh, which uh, they boil down to two ways to secure, issue money, to mint money, and to use them, to use them as a payment tool, uh, which uh, brings us to these uh, basic problems. Uh, counterfeiting, how do I know that you cannot provide money? Uh, how that I know that you cannot double spend it? How can I know that you uh, should not repudiate your payment statement? Uh, secrecy, anonymity, uh, man in the middle, uh, they are all the familiar risks. This is something that I should not be talking to you, are able to get these from common sense. And actually they've been set up as a, uh, this is the risk matrix, which has been set, I've uh, used this as a basis, from the MicroMint protocol, something that had been set in, uh, 1995. So these things are easy to figure, at least among technical, uh, technically aware people. So this qu part of the question is not easy to be asked. It's uh, easy to be answered, but the questions itself is not uh, that hard. And even that we have them, uh, the question formulated as a, the problem, it has not been solved really well for this long time because we have a lot of top of legal and political problems on the top of them, which are completely unconnected with them. We have uh, requirements about the entity. I'm, now I'm going to present in a very brief way. Uh, it's actually impossible. I'm going to talk the mindset of the regulator uh, when they give a permission to an entity. Let's think a bank or an electronic money institution to mint money. They have a very strong requirements to the people or to the organization, actually the organization, both organization, the people who are going to run it, who are going to uh, use and uh, actually uh, regulate, uh, issue electronic money. So the people and the organization uh, should be clear. So the responsibility should be bared, somebody should be controlled, somebody should be put in jail, somebody should be stopped. And uh, entity requirements, they talk really directly to the features of anonymization, distribution, decentralization. These current requirements uh, make it a little bit harder to make a di uh, distributed anonymous uh, currency at uh, Bitcoin would be. Because the great risk is the settlement risk. As uh, if I have to explain it in a very simple matter, the settlement risk is the risk for you to give me the money and not giving you the goods. This thing, this exchange, if, if it's a remote, it has a lot of uh, implication when it's done over the internet or it, when it's done in, not in presence. And to avoid the settlement risk, uh, a lots of uh, 
safety and precautions and develop. A lot of legal framework is developed just for this settlement risk. And talking about Bitcoin, in the very paper uh, it said that a Bitcoin does not address the settlement risk. So if you just pay, you have no warranty that you get your stuff back, which in my opinion makes uh, it uh, as called as hard currency uh, with no uh, warranty currency and uh, which makes it less applicable to the various uh, conditions that might uh, arise. Uh, counterfeiting accusation. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about it. Are you uh, just minting legal payment tenders? Uh, money, uh, money laundering and financing of terrorism. You know the magic word of terrorism that stops all thinking. When they say just terrorism and whatever they say, when they don't have to argument. And this is the bad part in the last 10 years. They have been just stopping all the projects and all of research just saying terrorism, 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 and money laundering. These two magic uh, words have stopped a lot of research and they can just stop you because usually you uh, cannot uh, dispute the actions of the authorities. They should preserve the order and actually they should preserve our liberties too, but they mostly tend to shut things down. Uh, tax evasion prevention. Uh, this is something that uh, should not our tax uh, uh, stop tax system for working because uh, when even when we talk about bitcoin i can easily think of ways that we can use this virtual currency the ability to make payments all around the world and to convert them immediately how i can uh, evade taxes how i can create stuff from nothing how i can use it to pay for services how i'm not kind of obliged to put it in the ba uh, balance and there are a lot of people who would think of tax evasion schemes for all their life and they would welcome a tool like big, uh, Bitcoin very good. So it's a legal concern for the uh, tax administration in the whole uh, country that electronic currency, which is not regulated and not made uh, compliable with everything, uh, might be used for tax evasion, which is something which uh, just um, puts the very foundation of the state in question. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad, but it uh, has this property. Con a consumer protection requirements. Uh, that thing that I just mentioned, you paid for something, it appeared to be crap, how do you get your money back? If you used a hard currency like Bitcoin, you just don't. You might uh, not get your stuff deliver delivered at all, so it's a settlement risk, or you'd just not be able to get your stunning uh, your money back if it's corrupt. Uh, ways to negotiate and conclude a contract. I'm not sure if you want to get into it because this is a complete uh, uh, set of problems. Uh, but this is how do we conclude and how do we understand each other from long distance and how do we fulfill these contracts, how we uh, fulfill our obligations. This is a complete set of problems and usually if paying is one, of the, one part of the contract, uh, it's a big issue, the, ways that it's going, the way that it's going to be paid. Auditability, the way to turn back the time and check what's happened with our money, if you give your money, and how the burden of proof is distributed. Another big question, uh, because when you paid something or something has been paid on your behalf, willingly or not, you need a good way to prove that you've been cheated, you've been robbed, or you really did it. So uh, this is another set of questions that, uh, let's say, immature uh, virtual currency like Bitcoin is not able to answer in a very convincing manner. Uh, why the legal part is important, you mo uh, most probably hate the law and for a reason, uh, rightfully so. Uh, but uh, in this uh, case of electronic money, uh, I would like to stress that you should not go in the revol uh, revolutionary way because it's a matter of trust, stability, and predictability. If you're brave enough, you can risk everything. You can put all your savings in Bitcoin. I would not care. But if you want to do everybody from the society, and the value of the payment method comes for the, its widespread usage. So if you want to propose a solution, it should fit to the widest group possible. Because the more users of it, the more it's more way useful. I don't know if it's uh, 
really good explanation, but stability and predictability is something that being illegal does not give you. And okay, if you're brave enough, it doesn't matter. But if you're completely illegal and you do not uh, achieve all, all your payments in your way, in your virtual way, the opposition will be funded by your other payments. So by your taxes that you pay every day by purchasing everything, you'll be funding your opponents just to come and get you. So if you're not successful enough to do all your payments in your way, you'll be paying your opposition to come get, uh, and get you. And it's kind of stupid to fund the opposition. And solving the wrong problem. When studying the history of the payment protocols, I found that the problems that uh, they've been posed, all the academics work on how to make an effective protocol, how to mint money in an effective way, and they compete and they develop and they made slight and major improvements all through the years, but they look from only one and technical perspective. And there is the question with, uh, amongst the cryptologists, we figured it out, David Chong's first uh, publication is in uh, 1982. In uh, 1992, he has already the idea of the complete system. It's 20 years ago. Still haven't figured it out and still haven't worked. And the good part is regulation is immature and can be made better, uh, which means that regulations currently the European Parliament haven't taken the... Uh, to do the dirty stuff and to ban anonymous distributed money. It's kind of, uh, it has been stopped for 10 years and now uh, recently we have an additional uh, uh, amendment to the data, uh, to the, not database, but electronic money directive, which is, again, it's not forbidden to have an anonymous digital currency. And if uh, we have the consensus, if uh, we can push the regulators, it can be uh, made better in a way. So feedback on the legally, I'm just going to scare you additionally uh, by just giving you examples, quick examples actually, of uh, what happened if you are illegal or how illegal uh, electronic money have been concerned. In the US, FBI and the Liberty Reserve, a guy has been running something which is qualified as completely okay electronic money. FBI crushed on him, they uh, sentenced him for treason, terrorism, uh, uh, counterfeiting, and uh, something like which sent, sounded like national terrorism and undermining the legal uh, foundations of the American society. And they was pretty harsh, I have it as a link Again, you can read the statement from the uh, U.S. attorney. It's not a pleasurable thing. And having in mind that U.S. interprets its jurisdiction like uh, whole of the world, uh, they might just come and find you if you are not uh, alignment with them. Deutsche Bank, it was curious to know what uh, your regulator thinks about this uh, regular guild currency. It's brave enough to refuse any comment. It said, we are not going to comment on the issue, and which is okay they are still allowed to exist. It's kind of borderline legal or illegal, doesn't matter, the regulator doesn't care. Swiss National Bank on VIR, I uh, let you uh, pay attention to uh, them. The uh, Swiss are okay. They said that uh, this kind of tools, which achieve uh, similar results to the regular guild, they said they do not affect our monetary policy, which is one of the best way. We know them, we monitor them. They are actually founded in 1932, Three, I guess. So it's pretty old, it's pretty stable. Take a look at, at, at it and study it. It's a formidable example, the, my favorite one. UK Financial Services Authority, the last three are on, bit, are on Bitcoin. Uh, so it's something relevant. UK states it's not electronic money, but it might be a tool for money laundering. So it's not what we give you, but it might be illegal. It might be illegal because they are asking Financial Services Authority a French court says there was a, a trial uh, uh, led by the French banks. Uh, they said again, it's not electronic money, but we don't know what it is. So again, it might be legal, it might be not. And the uh, most unfortunate part is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They uh, received a donation is Bitcoin for a very while. And 
after this while they received a statement that they do not understand the legal nature and the legal implications of Bitcoin. So they stopped. They said that this might not or might be illegal, so we rather stop it. Uh, so this is the position and I trust and respect them. Uh, they to know better. Uh, just another perspective uh, before I get into the so-called solutions part, it's the costs. It usually takes money and this is the best uh, where the uh, Bitcoin is the best in. Uh, if you're a normal money institution like PayPal, money bookers, chip and pink, a bank institution, you have to spend money on registration, operations, support, marketing, uh, customer, IT, whatever. You have a lot of costs going on. A Bitcoin uh, did something uh, really formidable, like uh, from Alice in Wonderland, actually in the uh, mirror world. <laughs> it, Bitcoin thought of six impossible things before breakfast or before Bitcoin. And it somehow revived the idea. And uh, as the professor from Darmstadt said, it's the first working electronic currency since perhaps since uh, David Chalm's DigiCash, which died in 1999. You should take a look and study it uh, too, because it was something working. And it just went broke. So when Bitcoin appeared, and all the hype is not for uh, no reason, it uh, just spread again the hope that you can have a decentralized uh, currency, and it's anonymous, uh, independent of what uh, has been already taught by the developers itself, confirmed by the lecture that we had a few hours ago. It's anonymous to a way that you cannot prove it. You might have an indication who the guy is, you might have just a positive, but you not have the proof. So it works, kind of. There are levels of anonymity, we'll talk about it later, but it kind of does some good job, and it might be approved. No operational costs. This is why all the banks and financial, financial institutions are really hurt. They, nobody spends money, real money, to run Bitcoin. Everything is done from some incentive base, and this is one of the most for, uh, formidable things about it. It's an open platform. It's not just the source code. It's the whole system is made this way that you can build services above it. So if you want to protect yourself from settlement risk, you might build an escrow service or you might build an anonymization service. You might somehow integrate and uh, expand the whole system. So the original design has its a core, but you might build around the core. This is something which is really a great feature, and I don't have to tell you about being open and being accessible to be written and uh, made better is something really important. And marketing model included, this is something, the, the economy part. Uh, which uh, I just enjoyed that much because people just got it, they started using it, and they loved it. And I'm, uh, now I'm going to uh, give a, a round of some proposition of how can we make it better. Uh, so, the first problem is that Bitcoin burns money to create money. Actually, people would like to make it cheaper to issue money, and now we are spending computer power, we are spending cycles, something which is not uh, cheap, to create value. Again, Ben Laurie in the linked talks explains it very well. Usually people try to find the cheapest way to do something. Bitcoin does this proof of work uh, to do it. It's not the most rational way to do it. In exchange for fiat money uh, or by something else valuable. This is the uh, genuine electronic money approach. They don't want you to create your own currency. They would like just to have you another uh, way of storing your money. So if you exchange for euros or for whatever currency you have back in your country, uh, this is the way that it might be uh, electronic money be issued. IOU credit debit principle, uh, the uh, examples for uh, alternatives to electronic money, uh, they have uh, a lot of different uh, methods of creating value and exchanging value. I owe you, this is our debit principle, I'll give you a favor, we'll value it for that much, and then you'll give it to him, and then he'll give it back. Something which builds a society, something that builds a community, something that is very typical for the uh, German uh, local currencies in Germany. 
uh, and uh, this is the principle that drives them. Some fair or random distribution. Uh, if you want to distribute, do initial distribution of wealth, name a distribution and you'll do it cheaper than Bitcoin. Uh, just if you have an idea what a fair distribution according to you is, you might just do it in a cheap way than identity base. Identity base is something that every, uh, is the concept that every, uh, every creature is entitled to some money for a, dig, uh, a digni uh, dignifying existence, to keep his dignity. So if I'm a living creature, I should res uh, receive some of this uh, uh, electronic currency. Consensus in a more effective manner. Again, the big problem of Bitcoin is that it spends a lot of its resources, a lot of resources of the network, to uh, uh, achieve consensus where the money are and what's the transaction history. Uh, again, this is something that should be optimized. Uh, the first thing is the easiest thing. That's, it's the uh, approach that we uh, know so far. Authoritarianism is cheap. You appoint a dictator which says you have that much money and this is the cheapest to keep a strong uh, out, uh, central authority. But we don't like it for all the uh, recent history to having somebody who is in complete control. So uh, decentralized trusted backbone. This is something that Bitcoin does currently. It started as an attempt, attempt as distri uh, distributed uh, currency, but then in, by introducing the trust points in the chains, it became just uh, these trust points, it make it somehow with a trusted uh, backbone. So we have a uh, decentralized but distributed currency. They, uh, the points of trust might be distributed in various ways, and people should, might look at it as an okay uh, way to, uh, for a compromise. Uh, Open PGP, we are going to the schemes of trust. You're a f a f a familiar, I assume, with the PKI hierarchy, with Open PGP, which is more like a web of trust, uh, way of uh, I trust my peers and trust them that much. This is something that uh, the Ripple project, these are guys who gave lecture to the summer uh, camp. This is the social identification. I know you, I trust you. So uh, I will accept information uh, from uh, you about them. This is something like distributed identification, which is uh, something relatively new. And I'm looking very, uh, with great expectancies from the guy who trying to do social networking in a better way, uh, in a non-Facebooky way, because the social networking has, uh, has its great advantages, but not at the cost that uh, current so-called social networks that offer them. Something really simple. Germany has uh, a way to identify a piece of datum legally. Electronic datum existed in a certain amount of time. Instead of using distributed time stamping like Bitcoin does, can we simply use uh, official time stamping to get a proof that a certain transaction or a cert certain contract existed in a, ver a point of time? And this we can use, uh, this is the so-called uh, signed receipt from the triple account technique uh, that we might use as a proof that something happened at a certain amount of time. It's way cheaper than having this distributed thing. Having a point that we will just uh, sign one thing and will give us back the proof. Practical Byzantine tolerance, this is a method uh, which uh, has been uh, first published in uh, 2001, uh, Ms. Barbara Liskov. This is again a way of achieving uh, consensus in a group. I wanted to make some uh, benchmarks if it's going to work better than Bitcoins, but it's way above me to make a decent benchmarks. So if somebody wants to benchmark a, be a, a practical Byzantine tolerance implementation against the current system of saying who has, ha who has how much uh, money in which moment of time. This might be a, a great benchmark which I would like to, uh, which of, uh, of which results I would like to know. Uh, better anony anon anonymity. It's complete anonymity possible. Do we need it first? Because when we deal, I told you, we need to know who are we dealing with for various reasons. We might just uh, have different grades of anonymity. I know who you are. I don't, I know really who you are, like say, but your face and everything of yours. I know your pseudonym. 
I know who, who you are, but I cannot prove it. This is something very important from legal perspective. Uh, I, uh, there is in uh, blind signature based schemes like in DigiCash, uh, it was something very uh, tricky that if you cheat, then your identity is revealed. Just pay attention into the David Chow's paper. He describes an algorithm that if you cheat and if you double spend a coin, an electronic money coin, then uh, your identity is revealed. And this is a way to somehow to preserve your anonymity if you are fair enough. This is something uh, that uh, might work. Or you can escrow your ID. There are practical ways your achievement. I would rather... Uh, I don't like the internet that it's, uh, it's right now. So if we have a dedicated layer of anonymity on which we can step, something like so. There is a system uh, which is called eCash. It was active uh, something like... It would be three or four years ago, which was uh, all completely built on Tor. It was Tor dependent for anonymity. And if you take a look, you might find very interesting ideas like the laundry services. Currently, Bitcoin has laundry service, which is basically if you can identify me by the serial number of my banknotes, I will just give you my banknotes and you randomly give me other uh, coins at the same value. This is the money laundering service, something like a mixing uh, bowl. eCash implemented it first. Now there is a Bitcoin laundry uh, which works as some commission. The way, uh, when it started, it was 0.5%. Uh, the last time I checked, it was 4.5%. Uh, uh, so it's getting uh, more expensive with the time. So legal, uh, purely legal and organizational, perhaps role and knowledge separation is something uh, which is uh, uh, important. You are all familiar with Airbag and how if I don't have an access to information or if I have to ask somebody to achieve a task or just my competence and the need to know role, uh, this might be a good way to preserve anonymity. Uh, jurisdictional independence might be. Liberty Reserve was based in Belize. I thought first it was in Africa, it happened to be in Latin America. A vague uh, jurisdiction where the strong countries do not have physical control, but they happen to have had. So if you have a, your thing or your bank on your remote island, you might be safe until you're not too famous. Uh, but combining it with other methods, it might get better. Uh, so I think I, uh, this is the short list of recommending reading. I should have included way more, and this is not a good practice to give you that, uh, just these few things to read. Uh, micropayment transfer protocol, this is something that lays the foundation of payments. Uh, ben Laurie, it's a great guy. I just enjoy the way he writes. Uh, on Bitcoin, he has two papers, which I uh, just quoted several times. I tried to mention him. Uh, they are really a must uh, when you understand the basic problems with it. And uh, the other things are the statements that uh, I'm trying to prove you. I just please read the FBI uh, statement to Liberty Dollar. It would scare you. And the other things are uh, something that I found from Bitcoin forums. Uh, yeah, the FSA statement. EFF, it's good to know that it's completely new uh, area. And what I'm talking about, I'm completely not confident. If it's what I'm telling you, it's right. I have my own opinion, I have an experience, I have a knowledge of how the re regulators work, but it's still an opinion and I can't state it in a complete certainty. And the triple anti-accounting and everything from uh, Jan Grieg, uh, it's on his site, I would uh, highly recommend to read it. Uh, and by reading it, you ask yourself better questions and uh, perhaps have some better answers than I'll do. So uh, now we should go in the QA if I might be helpful. Um, a round of applause for Peyo. Thank you. And we'll start the Q&A session now. As I said before, um, uh, I'd like to, you to raise your hands uh, if you have questions. I'll come to you. I'll 
go um, inside the rows. We also have an, a signal angel here now, so questions can also be asked via IRC. Please do that for the people who are watching the streams. We get a first question here. Um, yes, uh, I th um, thought I should mention there's a project uh, called Open Transactions that tries to uh, uh, combine uh, Shomian uh, digital uh, cash um, with Bitcoin uh, by backing uh, it with Bitcoin. Uh, so it could be uh, advantages from uh, both uh, sides. I'm familiar with the project. Thank you. It's a good reminder. Uh, if you want to read more legal opinions about uh, the legality of electronic money, OpenCoin have made a legal study and it has really important answers, uh, uh, really important questions. The answers are not valid since the adoption of the electronic money directive. But if you want to know, you should t take uh, and go read an OpenCoin.org. Open Transaction, a great project which is kind of uh, laying the foundation of all these things. Next question over here. Um, yeah, you said uh, the, about the, um, the court cases in the UK and France. Can you uh, maybe somehow sum up how they uh, reasoned that Bitcoin was not, uh, was not money? It's easy to reason that uh, because uh, of the properties that I mentioned in the very beginning. Uh, UK, because the French court uh, decision was translation, uh, uh, the lady which answered from uh, Financial Services Authority, she said that somehow you make money out of thin air. And yep. the very definition is that you uh, somehow transfer other money, like cash or stuff for bank accounts, into money. And this and other stuff that uh, made her unsure, this is very important. Uh, as an administration, they usually, let's say, they are not proactive. They don't want to do something unless it's urgent. So if it can, they can dodge the ball and say, this is not our responsibility, they would do it. I find this in the Deutsche Bank answer too. Okay. And there is a link, you should read it better. I'm not able to reproduce it. All right, because, uh, well, obviously the fiat currencies come from nothing. Uh, it's a long discussion. I told you I don't want to get into economy right. because we'll get just, uh, there is no answer there. There's another question here. I think we're somewhat blinded by the fiat currency system being one system, so we're kind of looking for one system. One thing that I've taken away from this conference and other places is that we'll, we'll need a number of different alternative systems. And we now have Bitcoin, it's not going away. And now we need like 20 different other systems to compete and, and to have a whole competitive field. This might be a solution, but as I told you, we need a consensus in a wide group. A good way to reach consensus is the natural selection. Yeah, there might be uh, the, a lot of systems which would survive the better, or they'll combine themselves. Actually, what I did here is exactly that. When I just uh, stated how the problem might be solved better, I referred to the tricks and tools that have been applied in previous electronic uh, cash system. So this is the way to go, actually. I would love to see people uh, who just go, I should have included a list of all the projects that are worth referring to, but uh, like the most uh, Eastern, DigiCash, please remember that DigiCash is the electronic uh, money system based on blind signatures. Uh, something else is, uh, uh, Shamir, uh, uh, Payword and MicroMint. Uh, this is another groundbreaking tool uh, in, uh, I should uh, write it down somehow, uh, in um, electronic money uh, because uh, they just lay the foundation. Uh, I might just give you uh, again, do you see anything? Uh, hardly. It's a bit small. No. Uh, but I'll give you more and more links about uh, the previous works uh, because I'm not just figuring out this, uh, this out of thin air. This is, has been a previous research which is uh, attempts, failures. We should learn from them. You're completely right in this. Any more questions? Please raise your hands so I can see you over there.
Yeah, um, <clears throat> I couldn't hear all the talk, but I would like to know what kind, um, what examples you have of use of Bitcoin in transactions. What mm, is the most? Uh, nothing legal. Nothing this legal. Is, yeah, the first impression that I had about Bitcoin is what I can use it for. Nothing legal. Uh, this was my uh, instinctive response because this is the first question that I would ask what I would like to use it for, why I need these properties and I need untraceable cash, yeah. Do you think it's, do you think it's needed to legalize Bitcoin to...? Mm, I would rather go with the legal one, the part. This is why I just paid so much attention on why do you need to be compliant, why do you need not a strong opposition. If not compliant, you don't need the strong resistance. Uh, this different things. Okay, there's another question in the fourth row. Uh, if I understand you correctly, you, uh, you can think of anything legal to use bitcoins on. Uh, I've used bitcoins for a long time and never anything illegal. So what's your illegal uses of bitcoins? I'll use it for tax evasion and money laundering, escaping of the uh, regimes of uh, transferring money uh, through boundaries. If I want to transfer money to the United States, it would take me three days and it would take me something like uh, 15 euro in expenses. This is the first thing that I'm going to use. I'm going to buy uh, Bitcoin in where I am and going to sell them in US. I'm going to transfer monetary value. Nobody would know, nobody would trace me. Uh, this is not considered legal to transfer monetary value via uh, boundaries. If I want to buy something and not know anything, uh, anybody not know, I'll combine Bitcoin with Tor and I'll try to hide myself as best as possible uh, to purchase it. Uh, I'll use it for tax evasion, like uh, having something like a uh, black uh, uh, cash, black pocket, I don't know how to, uh, the word in English something which is not in the books. I'll use Bitcoin currency to pay somebody and I'll receive value out from nothing. I will not pay taxes on these transactions. This, I'm, I'm in, impaired to have in mind. I'm a legal guy and I see it too and I'm just starting thinking of ways to explain it. This was my first uh, instinct. I'm not saying that it should be used for illegal or it can be, it has only illegal. This was my first instinct. Harder, more expensive. What did you just say? Could you repeat that? Hold on. You can use normal cash the same way. It's just examples of how you can use money illegally. Okay, it's not but I don't have to carry it the way that it, uh, avoiding uh, international uh, money transfer regulation, I would use it uh, better and it would work better. Okay, there's a question on IRC. Hello? Yeah, okay. A question from the internet. Uh, does electronic mon uh, money uh, automatically mean that we have one global central bank? Are there systems where I can decide who to trust with uh, creation? Again. Okay, it's a double question basically. Does electronic money um, automatically mean uh, that, we, that we have uh, one global central bank? And are there systems where I can decide who to trust with the creation? No way, no way. Decentralization should be a, a very important part of it. Uh, so nothing like uh, one central authority. This will be faulted by design. It's completely, uh, it's not the way to go. It would be the easiest thing to do in the, in the style of solving all our problems, just delegating to uh, some upper authority. No, but this would be completely stupid uh, if we should do it. Yep. Um, I'm completely again putting some limits on that, but you talk about um, yeah money laundering and this sort of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, would a limit on tra transactions make a sense? Like, all right, you cannot transfer over that sort of amount. You cannot move that sort of amount of money in that sort of amount of time. Would that sort of make sense? Um, I mean, oh, make uh, yes, there is such limitation like micropayments. If you take a look at payment service directive and the transposition, you have a different and uh, more lax uh, on micropayments. Uh, micro so if you have a limitation like that, even the regulators might be uh, way uh, more to look uh, easy on you. 
uh, because on micropayments, uh, the risk is not that big. So you are right, this might be a solution. If we set the upper threshold to, it's currently uh, something like 30 euro per transaction, uh, they might, you might easily get a virtual currency. Uh, but this is uh, a hack with the current uh, regulation. We have a question in the third row. Uh, yes. Uh, first off, I, I just want to comment that uh, some of us might um, think those are legal features, not legal problems. Um, the other thing is, I think, uh, when it comes to discussing decentralization, it's important to um, separate the issue of how you define database integrity and where the database is stored. Uh, in previous um, tries to make electronic currencies, you've had a uh, centralized database uh, that also defines the integrity. That you say you have a few columns and you say that, oh, this owner here that authent authenticates by this password has this amount of money in his or her account. Uh, in the case of Bitcoin, you have a decentralized timestamp server where the definition of database integrity is uh, whatever more than 50% of the network spent their um, CPU time on. Uh, and I think, I mean, it would certainly be possible to create a Bitcoin-like system where you, instead of using this distributed timestamp server, you could, uh, where, which is also the uh, creating more money mechanism way of, you know, distributing the, expanding the okay. money supply. You could create a, a Bitcoin system where you have the total money supply from the beginning uh, d defined by some kind of root key, let's say the Reichsbank of uh, Germany or whatever, and then they start distributing the money and through that you, you know, but then they would define in, uh, the database integrity, obviously. Your idea might be developed in more detail in OpenCoin. They have a, a paper uh, in which they consider how, they, because they, are, they use a blind signature and uh, the blind signature idea is uh, centralized by design but they have proposals how to split the database in parts and to make it at least decentralized. So you might uh, want to take a look at that. Uh, it just might give you another additional ideas. Are there any more questions? Please raise your hands. Anyone? Nobody at the back of the room? Nobody? Don't be shy. The front? Anyone else? Yeah, over there. Um, to what extent has the Bitcoin transactions be, be used so far? Uh, to what amount, in, in what amount, uh, in terms of amount of money? Oh, no, you can check this online. I don't have statistics right now. Um, um, uh, you mean globally, something like global statistics? Yes, I, uh, yes. Oh, in you general, should check. globally, uh, just, you just should. a rough uh, idea. I'm not sure you're able to have a right statistics. No, rough. Uh, I would rather not. I have checked them something like months ago. No way. Is there anyone else? Please raise your hand so I can see you. Anyone? No more questions? Oh, we have another one over there. Yeah, I'd just, just like to elaborate on, on the legal aspect that you brought up because um, I really hope that whoever is designing new monetary systems, they might be right here, uh, should not care that much about the legal aspects and just do whatever you can get to work because the legal aspects are definitely important but one shouldn't be constrained by them pre sort of the system being set up. We just have to test different things and, and get them going and apparently Bitcoin is good for some uses and then we'll have to, you know, in an organic manner, find whatever fits accounting needs, legal needs, and all those needs. I, you are, I completely agree. I did try to state out, restate it. Currently, it's not forbidden. This is, should be okay for you to go. It's forbidden usually by the regulations of the central banks who apply the directives into their licensing and monitoring regimes of the electronic money institution. So at the legal level, at, 
directive level, at law level, it's still not forbidden, which is a good sign to go. You don't have to have your business model written in a law. You don't have to be good to go from the very start. Completely agree with you. Uh, so this might be an important message. It's not illegal. Make it working. And if you can prove a societal interest big enough to have a lobby, these directives can be changed. The law can be changed. The regulation can be flexible. But it can be done if, until there is significant societal interest. There should be something to step on. So I encourage you to play with it, but do not solve only the technical problem. Just have in mind that there are lots of other uh, problems that uh, just might and come and get you. Uh, read the US guides. They are the most unpleasant ones, and they'll scare you right away, so you know how I have in mind. Is there one more question? We have time for one very quick question. Otherwise, I would ask you for another round of applause for Payo and Electronic Thank Money. Thank you very much. Thank you.